Hey guys, this is Caleb from the Command Valley coming at you with another deck tech. Here on the Command Valley, we talk about all things Commander, provide you with weekly deck techs to help you brew, gameplay videos, and so much more. Today I'm going to be talking about Thassa Deep Dwelling from the new Theros Beyond Death set. But first, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and even hit that bell to be notified about our weekly deck techs and other videos. Check out our other deck techs for Theros commanders such as Uro, Siona, Perforos, Athreos, and Hiliod. You can find links to those deck techs in the description. Let's jump in. Alright, so Thassa Deep Dwelling is 3 and a blue for a legendary enchantment creature god. She's a 6-5, she's indestructible, and she says as long as your devotion to blue is less than 5, Thassa isn't a creature, and then stuff starts to get real good. She says... At the beginning of your end step, exile up to one other target creature you control, then return that creature to the battlefield under your control. Her second ability is pay three and one blue to tap another target creature. So I opened up Thassa at our own little midnight pre-release and holy cow, I immediately fell in love with the value that Thassa's flicker ability brought me game after game. It was also then that I noticed that she has some interesting text that you might skip over the first time you read her. When she flickers another creature that you control, it comes back under your control. Typical flicker commanders that we're used to seeing like Aminatu can only flicker stuff that you own and other ones such as Brago and Rune both flicker and blink respectively stuff back into play under their owner's control. And so I knew right away that I wanted to build a Thassa deck that could steal stuff and keep it for good. Kind of how Kiora stole Thassa's Bident and never gave it back. So this deck is called Thassa's Vengeance. Also, don't discount her activated ability. Playing mono blue, you should definitely have turns that you feel just fine holding up mana for instance or flash creatures. And then having this ability on Thassa can really save you in a pinch. So it won't be super far-fetched to just pass and then end up having to tap down two or even three of your opponent's creatures and then steal another creature and swing him for the win with this deck. So again, definitely don't discount that last ability on Thassa, even though most of the deck is going to be focusing on her flicker ability. Before I dive too deep into the Deep Dwelling Thief's deck, I wanna make a quick note for those of you that are watching our gameplay series, Duel of the Peaks, which you should all be watching. We'll talk about it a bit more, but spoiler alert, I play a different Thassa deck than the one that we're going to be talking about today, in our upcoming gameplay video that we'll be releasing sometime later this month. It's more of a combo centric deck that I decided to build for the gameplay video because Landon won our first gameplay video by stealing all of our stuff so I wanted to keep it fresh. Both deck lists will be provided in the show notes for this video. Alright, so the main point of this deck is to play creatures that we're going to flicker with Thassa. So what creatures do we want to flicker with Thassa? The first category of creatures to flicker are those that draw us cards or give us card advantage, such as Watcher for Tomorrow, Seagate Oracle, Cloudkin Seer, Mole Drifter, and Spellseeker. Watcher for Tomorrow is an amazing card that I think is seriously underrated in Commander. For one in a blue, he's a human wizard that's a 2-1 with a hideaway ability. Hideaway is an ability that says this creature enters the battlefield tapped. Then when it does, look at the top four cards of your library, exile one face down, then put the rest on the bottom of your library. And then the cool thing with Watcher of Tomorrow is that when he leaves play or is flickered with Thassa, you get to put that exiled card into its owner's hand. So if you play him and then flicker him with Thassa at the end of your turn, you're digging eight cards deep and grabbing a card from the first four and another from the second four for a total of two cards for two mana, which is a great deal once he leaves the battlefield again, of course. Seagate Oracle is similar to Watcher of Tomorrow, except that you only look at the top two cards of your deck, but you do get to put the card that you choose directly into your hand. Cloudkin Seer draws a card when it enters the battlefield, and Moldrifter draws us two cards each time it enters the battlefield. You can see how having Thassa on board after playing creatures like these is really going to generate a ton of value by essentially doubling their enter the battlefield effects. Spellseeker is one of the best cards in the deck because it can help us find exactly what we need when we need it the most, such as cheap counter spells, cyclonic rift, pull from tomorrow, 
Reality Shift, and Mystical Tutor. All those cards are at your fingertips with Spellseeker. You can even tutor for two of them on the same turn with Thassa. The Team Mages also slot right into this category. They are Trinket Mage, Tribute Mage, Trophy Mage, and Treasure Mage. These mages each cost two and a blue for a 2-2 that searches for an artifact with a specific converted mana cost. Trinket for one, Tribute for two, Trophy for three, and Treasure for six or greater. I will only be running Tribute Mage in my deck because I run seven two-drop mana rocks that we'll talk about a little bit later when we talk about the ramp in this deck. So if you're running a lot of artifacts at any of these CMCs, I definitely recommend playing the corresponding Team Mage. The second category of creatures that we want to flicker are creatures with powerful enter the battlefield effects. Creatures such as Solemn Simulacrum, Master of Waves, Peregrine Drake, and Diluvian Primordial. If we play the Sad Robot and then flicker him at the end of our turn, we are slapping not one, but two extra islands onto the battlefield in one turn. This means that we can have access to up to seven or more mana by our fifth turn with this sad little guy. Master of Waves gets super gross super fast if we play him and then flicker him at the end of our turn. Master of Waves is a 2-1 for 3 and a blue, and he's got protection from red, and he says elemental creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1. And here's the best part. When Master of Waves enters the battlefield, put a number of 1-0 blue elemental creature tokens onto the battlefield equal to your devotion to blue. An important thing to know with Master of Waves is that when you flicker him, the other 1-0 tokens you have already created with him do not die due to him being gone. You might think this after the first time that you read Thassa's ability and Master of Waves together, because when he leaves the battlefield, your tokens will have zero toughness, and you know that creatures with zero toughness die. However, with Thassa's flicker ability, Master of Waves will leave the battlefield and return to the battlefield in one quick action before state-based actions are checked. So have fun with your mountains of 2-1 elementals. Peregrine Drake is great for helping us get stuff on the board or into our hand during our turn, and then getting flickered at the end of our turn so that we can have mana held up during our opponent's turns to activate Thassa's tap down ability, play counters, and do other useful things at instant speed. You know, all the things that mono blue decks do. Diluvian Primordial is an absolute powerhouse and can even win you the game. For five and two blue, you get a flying five five creature that also says, when Diluvian Primordial enters the battlefield, for each opponent, you may cast up to one target instant or sorcery card from that player's graveyard without paying its mana cost. Holy cow. If a card cast this way would be put into a graveyard this turn, exile it instead. This is absolutely nuts. On its face, it's just a really expensive 5-5 flyer, but with Thassa, it can be a 5-5 flyer and six other instant and sorceries. Remember that insurrection or maybe that expropriate that you countered last turn? Yeah, have fun winning the game with your opponent's stuff. The next category of creatures to flicker are creatures with ETBs that allow you to return spells from your graveyard to your hand. If you haven't listened to episode 4 of our podcast series, you should definitely check it out. Landon and Griffin did a great job explaining the importance of being able to recur our stuff. Since we're in mono blue, it's a little tough to recur our creatures. However, it is really easy to recur our instants and sorcery spells with cards like Archaeomancer, Mnemonic Wall, Salvager of Secrets, and Scholar of the Ages. All of these creatures return a spell from our graveyard to our hand when it enters the battlefield, except Scholar of Ages returns two spells. I would definitely run two to three of these creatures, and even running all four wouldn't be a terrible idea. I think that Scholar of Ages is just a little too expensive to cast and I rarely feel like I need to return four of my spells in one turn while playing this deck. But Archaeomancer is an absolute must have in this deck and Salvager of Secrets is right behind it. After that, it's really up to you if you want to put Mnemonic Wall and Scholar into your deck. We'll talk more about why these creatures are must haves towards the end of the video. All right, so what is better than getting value out of your ETBs twice? How about getting value three or even four times out of all of your Enter the Battlefield effects? Well, you can do this with cards like Crystal Shard, Panharmonicon, and Conjurer's Closet. Panharmonicon will double all of your ETBs. Conjurer's Closet lets us target a second creature to flicker on our end step. 
and Crystal Shard can be used to slow down our opponents and force them to play around it, and if they do, we can just send our own creature, like Watcher for Tomorrow, back to our hand so that we can play it again on our turn for extra value. Finally, we're getting to stealing our opponent's stuff and making it stick with Thassa. First, some examples of some creatures that we can use are Sower of Temptation, Duplicant, and Willbreaker. Willbreaker is absolutely one of my favorite cards in this deck, and she works so well with Thassa's abilities. Willbreaker is a 2-3 human wizard for 3 and 2 blue that says, whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes the target of a spell or ability that you control, gain control of that creature for as long as you control Willbreaker. With Willbreaker on the field, we can use Thassa's ability to pay for, tap target creature, and then steal it with Willbreaker anytime that we want to. Ray of Command and Reigns of Power are instant spells that allow us to take control of our opponent's creatures until end of turn, but if we use them during our turn and flicker a stolen creature with Thassa, then again, we get to keep it permanently. These are incredibly flexible steel spells. Chamber of Manipulation is a card that I forgot that I even had because it wasn't amazing until we got Thassa. For two and two blue, you can enchant a land and the enchanted land gets the ability to tap. Then you discard a card from your hand and you gain control of target creature until end of turn. So this basically turns all the cards in our hand into a ray of command for one after paying the four mana to enchant the land, of course and we're going to be drawing a ton of cards with this deck, so it is awesome. We can also activate it multiple times with cards like Peregrine Drake and other land untappers such as Cloud of Fairies. Vidalkin Shackles is another great non-creature permanent that allows us to steal our opponent's creatures. It's a little tougher to use, but it can be very oppressive again with Thassa's ability to flicker and keep our stolen permanents. I also wanted to quickly talk about the ramp in this deck. Again, if you haven't had the chance, go check out episode 4 of our podcast series that just released. Landon and Griffin also did a great job explaining the importance of running the correct ramp in your deck. In this deck, I decided it would be best to run as many 2-drop mana rocks as I could so that I could get Thassa out by turn 3 and start flickering my stuff by turn 4 and getting extra value off of them by turn 4. It's really okay to get her out by turn 4, but I like to get her out early if I can. 7 out of my 10 ramp cards are 2-drop mana rocks. Then of course I'm running Soul Ring, and then with High Tide and Solemn Simulacrum, that makes 10 pieces of ramp, which is right where I want to be in most of my decks. The two drop mana rocks that I'm running are Arcane Signet, Sapphire Medallion, Thought Vessel, Mind Stone, Sky Diamond, Cold Steel Heart, and Star Compass. The next thing I want to talk about is protecting our strategy and a little bit of redundancy. We're playing mono blue, so obviously the first way to protect ourselves is with counter spells. I wouldn't run more than five or six counter spells, and even that is pushing it. Limit yourself, even if you feel tempted to play 20 counter spells. Oops, all counter spells is rarely a fun or good strategy. Another way to protect our creatures and our strategy is with extra flicker spells. These may feel a little bit redundant, however, remember that Thassa's flicker ability only activates once and it's only on your turn. Essence Flux, Ghostly Flicker, and Illusionist Stratagem are great examples of what to run to be able to flicker and save our creatures when we need to. <laughs> Lastly, let's talk about some win cons. The main strategy of our deck is to obviously outvalue our opponents and steal all of their stuff. When it comes to value and stealing stuff, no one is better at it than Agent of Treachery. When Agent of Treachery enters the battlefield, you gain control of target permanent. That's right, any permanent. Then at the beginning of your end step, if you control three or more permanents you don't own, you draw three cards. It's insanity. By the time that we play Agent of Treachery with this deck, we are absolutely sure to already control a bunch of our opponent's stuff. So we're getting those three cards. We've also got some alternate win cons for when we haven't been able to close out the game by outvaluing our opponents and stealing their stuff. We can play Time Warp while both Archaeomancer and Thassa are on the field to take infinite turns. Make sure that you've got answers for anything that your opponents may have to stop this loop, then you can win with Agent of Treachery, Infinite Combat Phases, Thassa's Oracle by drawing out your whole deck. Really, with infinite turns, you've got limitless options for closing out the game. 
All right, so I'm taking a page out of Griffin's book and doing some reflection. I originally built this deck to win with Thassa's Oracle or Jace Wielder of Mystery plus Tunnel Vision and any of the multiple ways that we have in blue to set up the bottom card of my library. This version of the deck is what you'll see on the next episode of Duel of the Peaks. The deck worked, but it wasn't really as fast as I wanted it to be, especially enough to keep up with the rest of our group. Though it was super fun to play, I'm much more excited to outvalue everyone and then steal all of their stuff. There are a ton of other cards that I could have included, and the way that you build Thassa in the end is really up to you. All right, you've made it to the end of this video. Thanks so much for watching. Thassa is sure to generate you a ton of value no matter how you decide to build her, as long as you are sure to take full advantage of both of her sweet abilities. Be sure to comment below and tell us if you think there's anything that we missed, if you have any questions, and what other commanders you'd be interested in seeing us do videos for. Also, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that bell to be notified about our weekly deck techs, set reviews, gameplay videos, etc. You'll get the chance to see Thassa in action later this month when we release episode 2 of Duel of the Peaks, so don't miss out on that. Lastly, don't forget to check out our other deck techs as well as the full Thassa deck lists in the show notes. Thanks guys, girls, and goats.